Hello students, welcome to MEC 1321 Statics. I'm Dr. Stewart, and this is our second example video for the method of joints. And this example is example 6.2 from the book. Let's read the problem statement. This problem asks us to determine the forces acting in all the members of the truss and indicate if those members are in tension or compression. Let's look at the diagram that we're given and let's note how many members uh, are in this truss. We have a member AB, AD, BD, DC, and BC. So there are five members, five different forces that we need to find and indicate if they're in tension or compression. Let's also look at this problem in general and let's note what are some things that we're given. We're given an external force of three kilonewtons at point B. We're given quite a bit of dimensional information and angles in the structure. And we can note that our structure is supported at point A and point C, where at A we have a pin, and at C we have a roller, right? So we've got a fairly complicated truss that we're going to uh, need to analyze here, right? Well, let's take this analysis and let's formalize it into a free body diagram and into a list of knowns and unknowns. What we'll start with is taking the diagram that we're given and simplifying it into a free body diagram, representing the beams as simple lines and the key points as, as points, putting our dimensional information there again, so the, the the dimensions, the angles, putting our external force of three kilonewtons and replacing our supports with the reactions, resulting in a reaction AX, AY, and a reaction CY. We've got all of this analyzed. We can say that our knowns are the, is a three kilonewton load. We have the dimensions and angles. Our unknowns are the support reactions AX, AY, and CY, as well as those five truss forces. The force CD, force CB, force DA, force DB, and force BA, right? Now, if we look at our free body diagram, we see that we have three equations because it's a 2D, a 2D problem and we have three unknowns. So for this case, for this problem, we could directly apply our equations of equilibrium to find the values of those support reactions of AX, AY, and CY. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's get those support reactions and then let's go through finding, using the method of joints, the values of the forces in each of the trusses. So let's create equations of equilibrium for a free body diagram. We're going to create three equations. The first one is the sum of the forces in the x direction. We're going to go look at our free body diagram and see what is in the x direction. We have this positive three kilonewtons. And then we have minus AX. Let's put that together. Three kilonewtons minus AX equal to zero. Let's do the same thing for the sum of the forces in the Y direction. Let's go up to our diagram. We see that CY is indicated as positive, AY is indicated as negative. 
Let's formalize that. Uh, the sum of the forces in the y direction is cy minus ay equal to zero. And then lastly, let's do the sum of the moments. And let's select point A, because that's the point where most of our forces will cancel out. We're going to do the sum of the moments about point A, going up to our diagram. If we take point A as where we're going to sum moments about, we can see that CY will cause a counterclockwise sense of rotation, and that three kilonewtons will cause a clockwise sense of rotation. Let's formalize that into an equation. We'll find that CY times four meters minus three kilonewtons times two meters is set that equal to zero, gives us our sum of moments equation. With these three equations, and with them having three unknowns, we can rearrange and solve, and we'll find the value of AX is 3 kilonewtons, the value of CY is 1.5 kilonewtons, and the value of AY is 1.5 kilonewtons. So now we've, we've found our reactions, we found the, the value of those reactions, now we need to start solving for the force in each of the members of the truss. And for this, we're going to apply the method of joints. Now, in the method of joints, the rule is, is to analyze a joint. The joint must have at least one known and at the most two unknowns. And that's because when we're analyzing joints, we only have two equations some of the forces in X and some of the forces in Y, all right? So with that rule in mind, if we go back and look at our diagram and we want to find a location where we have uh, one known and at the most two unknowns, the only location that we have is going to be joint, is, is going to be uh, joint C where we, we know CY, we just solved for it, and there are two unknowns, uh, which are the, the, the forces in these two truss members. So we're going to start at that joint C. If we wanted to start anywhere else, we're going to find that there are too many unknowns. So this is a step where we have to analyze our free body diagram before we can proceed. So we've selected joint C as our starting place, Let's go ahead and create a free body diagram for joint C. At C, we have the reaction CY, which we had just solved for. It's going up. And then we have the forces in the two truss members, so a force uh, CD and a force CB with some angles in between them. We're going to take this joint diagram and create are equations of equilibrium. Summing the forces in the x direction, getting F a CB times the sine of 45 degrees minus F CD times a cosine of 30 degrees equal to zero. And summing the sum of the forces in the y direction, getting F CD sine of 30 degrees minus F CB cosine 40 degrees plus 1.5 kilonewtons, representing CY, setting it equal to zero. With these two equations, and having only two unknowns in them, we can rearrange and solve. We'll find FCD is equal to 4.1 kilonewtons in tension, and FCB is equal to 5.02 kilonewtons in compression, right? So we just found, uh, using this method of joints, the, the forces in two of the truss members. So now we're just going to hop to the next joint. What is the next joint, now that we have found two of our unknowns, what's the next joint that has at least one known and at the most two unknowns. So we're going to work to the next joint. We're going to find that next joint 
is joint D. And at joint D, actually, let's go back to our diagram and look. Where is joint D? D is this joint here. And we know the force in this member, because we just solved it using joint C. And the two unknowns we have are the forces in these two members, right? So we'll create a free body diagram of that joint where we have that known force FCD and the unknown forces FDB and FDA. We also will get our dimensional information. So we have these uh, 30 degree angles uh, for FCD and FDA. Let's take this diagram and create equations of equilibrium. Some of the forces in the X direction ends up being FCD times cosine of 30 degrees minus FDA times cosine of 30 degrees equal to zero. This simplifies to just FCD is equal to FDA. The next equation, some of the forces in the Y direction, we'll find FDB minus FDA times sine of 30 degrees minus FCD times sine of 30 degrees equal to zero. Rearranging and solving these two equations, we find that FDA is equal to 4.1 kilonewtons and its intention, and FDB is equal to 4.1 kilonewtons and its also intention. So now we found another two uh, of the forces in two of the members. Now for our last step, we have one remaining unknown member uh, force. And we have two locations that we can analyze. We can analyze joint A or joint B to get that unknown. Let's go back to our original free body diagram and we'll see well, what we mean, the one remaining unknown we have is this member uh, FBA. Uh, and so we can analyze point B or point A in order to figure out the force in that member. Either of those locations will give us the exact same final answer. The equations of equilibrium will just be different. So the best choice is to choose the simpler location. Where will the equations be simpler? Where are there less things coming in and out? And that location for me is joint A. So let's use joint A. In joint A, we have the support reactions AX and AY, which we already know. We have the known force FDA, which we just solved for. And the one unknown we have is the force BA, and they're separated by some angles. Let's go ahead and create our equations of equilibrium. The sum of the forces in the X direction would be FDA times cosine of 30 degrees minus FBA times sine of 45 degrees minus AX equal to zero. If we look at this equation closely, we see there's only one unknown. So this equation by itself can get us the force in that last member. So we could just stop here with the, some of the forces in the X. Uh, or we could use uh, the other equation, the sum of the forces in the Y direction, and we'll end up again finding only one unknown, one equation. We could rearrange and solve, and we'll end up with the exact same final answer. In the case for this problem, the force and member BA is 0.776 kilonewtons, and that is indicated in compression. All right, so we've solved this problem. Starting from the top, this problem asks us to determine the forces acting in all the members of this truss, and this truss has five members. We created a free body diagram of the system, replacing the supports with the reactions, and we created a list of knowns and unknowns, including both the free body diagram uh, unknowns as well as all the unknowns that we're asked to find. We decided to directly 
Use the equations of equilibrium to find the values of the reactions, the AX, the CY, and the AY. Then we decided to apply the method of joints to find the values of forces in each of the members. We, using the method of joints rule, started with joint C, creating a diagram, solving the equations of equilibrium, and then we repeated that for joint D, and then finally for joint A, finding the forces in all of the truss members. So, we've solved this problem.